peace uh, is not an utopia, peace is necessary. If we don't have peace, then we have wars. And look at the wars in Afghanistan, in Iraq, in Libya, in Syria, and so on. Um, wars are destroying, wars are killing millions of people. Uh, I've been in a lot of countries like this, and, uh, in the research of German weapons. And uh, I met hundreds of people uh, and talked to them what happens if, uh, in this case, uh, German weapons are delivered to these countries, given to the di dictatorship and used against the population in these countries. Um, what I have seen is, um, say, hundreds of people which are traumatized. All of them are traumatized. But this is only past pro toto an example. So there are millions of people traumatized. So if war is not be stopped, will not be stopped, um, and peace will not come, then the world will be destroyed. We have to have the utopia of peace. We have to realize the utopia of peace step by step. Step by step means you cannot click like uh, now the world is a better one. But there have to be a lot of people working for peace, for justice, for an ecological world, intact world. And what we have to form is a, is a huge network all around the world. I'm not strong enough, you're not strong enough, we all are not strong enough. Our organizations, I speak for the largest, biggest peace organizations in Germany because it's spokesman of them. But it's not enough. We have to form the network for peace and justice. And I think this localization, this um, monastery is a very good, um, can say, place to start this idea of utopia. Um, it's a sign we can give to the world. Uh, a lot of people here from Italy and other countries and go home, they We'll go home, tell the story of Utopia. Maybe this is a start. So back to your question. Utopia should not be um, a thinking of some people and say, it's far, far away, we cannot do anything. Utopia must be a realization, must be reality. Um, there was a poll in Germany. Um, the people were asked, um, are you do you accept weapons export to other countries? And 83%, 83% of the Germans say, stop weapons exports. 83%. So Germany is eight, uh, 80 million people. Maybe it's you can say 50 or 60 million people in Germany don't want to have weapons exports because they know what happens with these weapons in other countries. Yeah? Uh, we have the pictures, we show the picti uh, pictures, we, we give the victims a voice and we invite them to come to Germany or the doctors to come to in Germany and to tell the stories what happens in these countries if we deliver, we means Germany and the German government deliver weapons and the armaments industry deliver weapons. So there are a lot of people, we are, we are in a majority. The problem is that most of the people say, okay, do this job for us. Yeah? And I say, no, we have to do the job. We all together have to go on the road. We have to go in front of companies like Heckler & Koch and others, Beretta here in Italy, uh, which are delivering small arms, and small arms are the most deadliest weapons all around. You have um, two-thirds uh, uh, people are killed in, in war and civil wars with small arms and rifles. And uh, Heckler and & Koch and Beretta are number two and number three in the world, you have imagined. So there's, there's a lot of killing coming out from Italy and Germany all around the world. Yeah? The death is coming from Italy and Germany in the world and we have to stop it. And we are the majority. Now how to bring the people um, with non-violent action in front of Heckler & Koch or Beretta? That's the question. about the fate of these people, about the life of these people, about the destruction by weapons exports. And it's no difference between weapons exports of Heckler Koch or Beretta or um, Russian or American weapons. It's always the same result. People are destroyed, families are destroyed, uh, traumatization is, is, is not a special symbol or, or, or part of the system in, in one family. It's, it's all around here. So, then I said to me, the rest of my life we will give the victims a voice. Um, 
maybe some of them are coming to Germany and they are talking about their, their, their life and their destruction of the destruction of their life. Um, but it's enough for the, it's good enough to, to say the doctors should come. For example, we um, in our campaign, which is called uh, Stop Weapons Exports and called Action Out Cry means cry out loud against weapons exports. Um, we have an organization, it's uh, IPPNW, and uh, this is uh, an organization of doctors. They won the Peace Nobel Prize in 1993. Um, and they invite doctors coming from these countries and telling the story. One doctor is from Kenya and he tells the story, my job is to operate six childs per day, every day. And he specialized on the bullet impact in the body, in the head. And he shows us a child, a young girl who lost all around here, no tooth, no nose, no teeth, nothing was here. So the huge hole, but one bullet, one bullet. And now he puts uh, metal plates and put it inside and reform the bones. And now you have six, seven operations, and then you have a new face of this young girl, and the mouth is too wide, yeah, but she's smiling, yeah. And it costs about five thousand, six thousand, maybe ten thousand dollar for this girl to help her in her life. Um, so what we can do is to give the victims a voice and say, stop all these criminal weapons exports. They are criminal. If, if they are legalized or not, they are criminal against the people. And my utopia here in this monastery is with my life, with our lives, and we are more than hundreds of organizations with action outcry, more than hundred organizations in Germany to say stop weapons exports. A lot of the peace movement, of the um, human rights movement, of the Protestant and Catholic Church, and uh, so they all say stop weapons exports. We are the eighty-three percent in Germany, and my utopia is step by step. We come nearer to this aim and we realize it. And I think we realize it. We, really, we do. But the problem is not in one year, not in two years. So we have to find the right steps and the right peace actions, nonviolent actions against these companies, against these politicians who allow these politics. So um, what I can say after 30 years working against Heckler & Koch and such companies, written a lot of books about all the companies in Germany and the politicians and the lobby organizations for military and bring light in this dark uh, business. Uh, what I can say is we are maybe three or four stops go steps going on in, in 30 years. Yeah? My first complaint against Heckler & Koch I made in 2010 because I was a whistleblower. He phoned to me in 2009. He was, uh, he was crying at the phone and say, I was a member of Heckler & Koch and I was in Mexico. And what we did there is a criminal act because we are de delivering um, rifles, um, assault rifles of the type of G36, uh, the modest, most modern weapon of Heckler & Koch of HNK. Um, to regions like Chihuahua, Chalisco, Guerrero, uh, means it was not allowed by the German law to do this. And the politicians say, okay, Mexico is secure, well, that's crazy. Mexico is secure, but four regions are not allowed. But Heckler & Koch delivered half of the weapons exactly there in these regions. Yeah. So the man said, we did this. And I say, oh, take care. <laughs> what he's saying is it reality. We met us several times. I learned uh, to, that he is a man, uh, he's, a, he's a Christian, he say, um, never lie in my life again, never do criminal acts. I, he left Heckler & Koch and he gave me a lot of documents. He gave me films and uh, slides and photographs and uh, yeah, I believed him. And then I made a complaint with my lawyer, Holger Rothbauer. Holger Rothbauer is uh, a professional lawyer against um, weapons exporters. So we have a lot of success uh, in front of court with Holger. 
Um, now, America first complained in 2010, Holger um, uh, spread it, widened it 2012 against um, um, the Ministry of Economics because they are involved in this case. We have the documents, we have all the documents, it's wonderful. We have the documents, um, telephone calls and emails and so on. Many, many documents. Um, and there's evidence that not only Heckler and Koch was interested in delivering weapons to Mexico. Um, the, the offices, the um, ministries are interested to do this, to support the weapons industry. So it's very, very interesting what happened then. It took five years till the prosecutor in Stuttgart um, awakened. Um, we made a lot of peace actions in Mexico with victims together. Um, we made a peace action in front of prosecution in Stuttgart and it was not enough. We published a book with all the documents, selected. It was not enough. What I've done is um, to meet a filmmaker, the most famous filmmaker against weapons exports we have in Germany. It's Daniel Harich. And he went with um, a team of uh, actors to Mexico and he made a fictional film. And he went there and made a realistic documentary film. And we have the support of the first German television ARD. And he sent these two films at the best time, um, whole the evening with discussion in TV and it was sent to more than three hours, the documentary and the fictional film. And we have now six million visitors for these films in Germany. And then the prosecutors say, okay, now it's difficult. Everybody knows, everyone knows in Germany. So um, I made a complaint, he made, um, now he, uh, brought six managers of Heckler & Koch in front of court. And we will see what happens in front of court in January, February 2017. Um, it's very interesting what happened then. Um, two of the six have been uh, top managers of Heckler & Koch. So very interesting what happened. Um, I think they have to go in front of prison. They have to be imprisoned because it's, uh, the German law is very, very clear at that point and say minimum two years to go to prison, be imprisoned. Um, but take care, the German um, courts and um, can say the justice is not only on our side, but it's a new step. And now we turned. Um, long years, long decades, the peace movement say, oh, take care, it's dangerous, this job. And now we turned and the managers say, Oh, don't export, ex, uh, export illegal, it's dangerous. The peace movement will, will find it out. We have whistleblowers, yeah? So it's a new situation. And um, this is a point at that day to say, it's not only Heckler and Koch, it's Six Sauer too, it's Karl Walter too, and so on. Uh, we made many complaints, eight at the time. Yeah? So let's go on on this way. This is one example, this is one step I can tell you. There's a lot of more steps to say, if there's an utopia, it's far, far, far away. But you can realize step by step to come nearer to this uh, utopia. Um, maybe I will not survive this idea. I will not uh, see that it happened really. There's no weapons on this world and no military now, and that's not in my life. Um, you have to go on, you're a young man, and go on this way, and our children and have to go on, on this way. Uh, but maybe, maybe it's in, in 50 years, in 100 years, we have to abolish war. We have to put him away, the war is so crazy, we don't need it, it's destroying. What we need is utopia, a world of justice, a world of peace, a world of health people, of well-educated people, yeah? a world of love, we would say, so we don't need this military, we don't need this armaments industry, and we work together, that's for me important, as a network all around the world against this madness of military. So I'm a doctor against the madness of military.